Watch me as I make this for a friend of mine. They love to burn incense, and I thought they'd get a kick out of this. So I do some dry painting with some blends and some details. Hang on, it's gonna be fun. Hey everyone, I got this cool new mold. This is from Resin Queen, but it's an incense burner and I love it. I love the detail in it. I thought this would be a really fun one to have. Already painted up and ready for my leftover resin. And give you an idea in scale. It's a pretty good size mold. <laughs> but I do enough resin pours and all that that I need to plan out for using excess resin. So this puppy will probably get filled up pretty fast. But I wanted to talk to you about resin molds for a little bit. And they are something that you need to take care of. There's some simple things you can do to help out with the... Uh, to make them last a little bit. One, obviously you can clean with soap and water. Be mindful of the resin bits. Make sure they don't go down your sink. So put a, some kind of screen or something like that to catch your resin bits because you don't want that either to go in to the water source or your septic tank. We have a septic tank. We have to be careful. Anyway, the other thing is too is when you're not using this, um, a good way to keep, uh, keep them nice and clean obviously is you know clean them up beforehand this one's nice and brand new and shiny so it's already clean but one of the things I do is I have some extra cookie sheets around that I use in my baker's rack I'll show you the baker's rack one of these little thingies and that's what I use to cure my uh, resin art projects in but I've got one of the trays that's set up for my molds and what I do when I'm not using them is I simply just lay it face down it keeps all the loose particles and debris that's floating around in the in the studio um, from getting in. And when I'm ready to use it, I just flip it over, including when it's been dry painted. I'm not, you know, dropping it down on the thing. I'm just got it upside down, so most of the uh, the pigments will stick to the silicone. Another thing you can do is you can have them wrapped up in some shrink wrap. And that'll keep them nice and clean as well. So something to keep in mind. You, uh, take good care of these things. They'll last for a long while. Also, um, you see me do a lot of dry pigments uh, paintings with these guys. And I want to point out something with, it, with you about that. Because they're a fine powder, think of it as like a very fine sandpaper. And I'm trying to get one that is a lighter color so I can demonstrate this a little bit better. And I'm also trying to unscrew a cap with one hand. I am impressed with myself. Okay, so it's a fine powder. And use an application of a little silicone brush with a little tip there that I dip in and I rub it around. But when you're doing something like that where you're using some a particle like this on something that is very soft and squishy, eventually it's gonna feel like sandpaper to it. So if you've got a mold that you wanna keep super shiny, say a nice little bowl or something like that, um, or a bracelet or ring, you know, jewelry molds in particular, and you wanna keep it shiny, I wouldn't recommend doing dry painting, uh, dry pigment painting on it too much because it will roughen it up, it'll take the shine away. And so something to keep in mind of. This one here happens to be uh, have a lot of design on there and so it's not going to come off as shiny and if it doesn't that's probably not too much of an issue because the end result will be really really cool with all this texture. Let's see if I've got something floating around here. Hold, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I wanted to get these two little guys to give you a demonstration. This particular mold here was also done by Resin Queen and it does come off as shiny and I'm just trying to bring it in to show the reflection of it. And so you can see there's a pretty good shine on this. Um, I did do the dry painting technique on there and it will probably keep shiny for a, a good, good bit of time as long as I'm taking good care of this. Um, if I do it 20, 30 times, eventually it's gonna have an effect and I'm gonna lose this nice little shiny bit. Now there is things you can do. You can uh, spray a nice little uh, gloss um, 
spray on there to help bring up the shine to it. Uh, you could do another coat of resin on there. So there's, there's some things you can do. This particular one here, I picked this guy off of Amazon and it was never, to be honest with you, going to be shiny. You can see it's got a matte finish to it. And so the dry painting, not going to affect it too much at all. And I can keep doing this over and over again and I'll probably get see little difference with this guy. So something to keep in mind if you want to keep it super shiny, be mindful of how you paint and that if you use the dry painting technique. So that's all. I just want to make sure you all had a good note of that. And I'm going to get set up so I can do this little guy. Because I've got a couple of people I think that would really like this because they burn incense all the time. Later. I do. All right, so I'm going to try and talk through my process that I'm going to do here. So if you see this particular mold, it's got a lot of nice raised details in it. It's also got some definitely divisioned out fingers and that little diamond bit in the middle. So what I thought we would do, or I would do, is Okay, so this area in here has definitely got a scalloped flower in there. So I thought I would use um, this, it's a cinnamon spice color, which is kind of a, a bronzy glitter to go in there. And then I've got a dark, uh, like a deep purple that I'm gonna be using on the, uh, the raised parts. Like, see this little swirl here? So I'm gonna paint those first throughout the entire piece. So that's going to be the thing that connects the whole bit together, is this uh, deep purple. And then I'm going to use that cinnamon or bronzy color, let's just say bronze for now, uh, in the flower and then have a little bit of fade out with the, the deep purple. Paint the inside eye. Oh, I didn't think about that part. Maybe I'll paint that uh, the same uh, bronzy color as well. So there's that part in the middle. We've got the deep purple here. And then I've got a variety of colors here that kind of have a nice little rainbow type blend. But yet I'm not worried about the rainbow so much. So what I'm gonna do here is like, see this first finger here? Have this be the yellow and the orange and the pink. I've got a blue and then a green. And then there's this diamond color here that I would paint with the, uh, the purple right here. So the colors I'm using are all from La Resin. It's a nice fine pigment powder and it has a little bit of a luster shimmer to them. I really, really, really like these guys. As you can see, those bottles have been well used. There's a couple of them I haven't used too much of, like these two. I'm, oh, okay, I'm kind of guilty on that. But um, I believe these two outer edge ones, this is my second, <laughs> these are my second bottles on those guys. So anyway, that's the plan. Now I gotta get to it. Isn't that fun? So again, I'm using my little silicone brushes. Br blah, blah. Let me try that again. Brushes, there, got the word out. Uh, I picked them up from an art supply eons ago. Um, but they these came in a kit of like, I believe like five different shapes. These two shapes seem to be the ones I go to the most. And I simply just dip it into the bottle with a, a fine mica powder in it and it collects enough on the outside of the brush that I can use it at that point to apply by just simply brushing onto the mold. So I'll try and show you this with the dark powder, but simply just go in and you see how it looks like right now. So I'm gonna dip it in. Jink. Dip it out and you see how it picks up just a little enough. And then I have a, um, no, I don't have one. Excuse me, I need to get one. That would be a paper towel to rub it on occasionally to get rid of excess. For example, when uh, shifting colors, say like I'm going from a yellow to the purple, I definitely don't want to mix that color in the bottle. 
I'm not too worried about the blue going into the green, for example, but definitely wouldn't want a white going in, or a pink going into a white or vice versa. So, all right. I don't know why I dimped the cone one because that's not the one I'm gonna use. Okay. So I'm using my chisel one. Just dipped it in so you can see it's got a little bit of a chunk of powder on there. And I'm gonna tap that guy just to get rid of that chunk. But what I'm gonna do is basically brushing it over horizontally and it's gonna pick up on these raised edges. Let's see if I can get it closer. And just do this over and over again, going across the top. It's kind of like dry brushing. Dry brushing paints with texture. Okay, now this is a challenge because I really zoom in and I'm trying to keep it in camera, but it will go off every so often. I apologize ahead of time. I'm trying to keep it. See how it's like you got this dark zone already? It doesn't take a whole lot with dry brushing to pick up textures in, in things like this. In a dry brush technique, you literally are dealing with minimal, see how I just dribbled that down there? Don't panic. Don't panic. Flip it over and drop it on your table a couple times. It will come out for the most part. You are gonna get splatter bits on there if it needs to be accurate, don't use this technique. However, you can get a lot of really super cool blending that you can't get with a lot of techniques. So it has its perks and it has its pros and cons basically. Now, I'm gonna apply the colors with the cones because I can really get in there in between. So like these little scallops, you see these little scallops here? I can get the cone in there and really get some colors in there. Well, this one we're probably gonna have to tap out a few times. I'm just gonna go all over this and pick it up on this raised pattern. And by doing this particular color all over, it kind of connects the whole piece together design-wise. I Me mean, as far as the coloring scheme. There's gonna be hints of purple all throughout, and that's okay. It's kind of like this guy here. It's a little bit of a mess, but you get little color bits all over the place. And as long as you know that's the technique ahead of time, then you're okay. If it needs to be clean, don't use this technique. It's like every technique has its place but it is a great beginner technique also because the texture does a lot of the painting for you. Now, if you wanted to go in very carefully after you've rubbed this and paint each one with, with trying to be precise, that might work out really, really well too. Because here I've got all these outlines painted up ahead of time. It might make for filling in the blanks a lot easier when you've already got your outlines done. So 
So the plan here is to do the raised edges first. And then I'll go in and work on that flower that is the center point where the incense would stay. tap this before going on to the next color for sure meaning the mold I'm going to tap in on the table get rid of this excess purple and I might go up on those edges get some of the purple on the edges too Now I use these guys for leftover resin and I have a couple painted up that I just keep on the side and whenever, because I do a lot of resin projects um, and I'll have a variety of colors left over and I will use these guys to give purpose of that leftover resin. Eventually they get filled up and then I got a project done. And by doing this technique here, and even though I'm using bright colors, it's going to give the overall effect of it being kind of earthy. Like, kind of like when you put a bright color on uh, wood and you get some of the wood hues showing through, it um, gives more of an earthier undertone to your piece. So the purple will do the same thing with the bright colors that I'm using. Okay. So I'm using the flat part of the chisel right now to just kind of rub across the top. And it's definitely going to pick up the design on the top part here. Let's see. Here I am concentrating again and I can't talk and, <laughs> and art at the same time. I'm trying. Okay. So inside the petals here, I'm going to work with um, colors called cinnamon spice. But I want to round the eye here. I know I'm going opposite of what an eye would be. This would be the iris of the eye. I don't know. I just feel like doing it. But I'm going to do the deep purple in here. I'm hoping it gives kind of a metal-y look to the piece. It makes sense afterwards. Now I'm going to do just some of the edges here. Like some of these raised portions. And that little tap there is me dipping it in and just tapping it on the edge of the bottle to get rid of some of the edges. Or the excess. See I'm trying to talk in art doesn't always work. All right. As you're watching this, you're probably like, oh, she missed a spot. And she can't, can't tell me over the, the video. Okay. I 
want to make sure all the border is done because that seems to be all throughout the entire thing. All right. I'm looking right now at the flower, wondering if I need to put any more into that. Yeah, I'm gonna change my plan a little bit. So my color of the flower mostly is gonna be a cinnamon spice, but I kinda wanna do a little bit of color. So I'm picking up my purple that I'm gonna be using, and this is an amethyst. Amethyst Dream is what it's called. And I'm mostly gonna be applying it. I hope I didn't do just that part of it off camera. I'm sorry if I did. Like portion of the petal. But I'm kind of going in a brush stroke where I'm kind of going on top of it myself. And by doing that quickly, I kind of give a blended edge and not a sharp edge. This is one of those things that if I did it one pass, it'd put a nice light coat on there. But if I do a second pass, I might get crevices that I didn't get before. So get, in other words, apply more color. So that's what I'm doing, a second pass. And you can see the little bit of an amethyst color in there right now. Try and work this in on the cracks here. Why not? Alright. Now the cinnamon spice Rub off my brush here real quick. It's super, super light. It's kind of a mica slash glitter. Or it could be just all mica, I don't know, but it comes off. It seems to be clumping together. Never mind, ignore what I just did. It's holding on the brush really well, look at that. So I'm gonna go into these petals and just start brushing it up. And even though it's showing on the edge there, I put that other color first. So that's gonna be the first color you see when the resin comes out of the mold. I'm just doing it over and over again until I get a good amount of coverage. Because I've already got that blend in place, that was also going to be the first color you see, too. Ooh, this might turn out better than I expected. Not talking a whole lot here, sorry. 
concentrating, trying to get this flower petal just so. Again, not too worried about it if it gets up on the edge because I painted the other color first. So it's like first in line. So what's interesting is when you think in reverse, when you pour this resin and then it cures and you pull it out of the mold, all these raised bits, those are gonna be in the um, shadows. So could you imagine getting a paintbrush in there and trying to paint those little shadows of a resin mold after it came out? That would be a booger. That would be tough. Oh, I'm excited about this. All right, let's get this in this eye here. And now it's gonna go ahead and get this little, I don't know what you wanna call it, holder for the incense. Don't pull that off. If you wanna use this as an incense, incense holder, it's important. Okay. All right, let me clean these off and I'll come back. Hey everyone, okay, I'm back. Life happened, gotta take care of life. Uh, basically, usually it means have to do things with family, that kind of thing. We're trying to squeeze in every little bit of time we can before college to do special stuff. And one of my sons had requested a particular dinner that they probably wouldn't get at school. So I needed to go get busy and make some of that. So I am going to apply in this finger area here and probably blend it out a little bit here. Um, my first color and that's a nice bright yellow. So I know I have the dark purple in here. So for me, it's just a matter of tapping it in and eventually it will get down to the surface and collect where the, uh, where the dark purple is not. That probably helps me putting a little bit more in there like that. It's a very pretty bright color. This is a great way to use some of your pigments. Say like um, if you have issues like me and have to have all the colors and you've got a lot of powders floating around and you're like, oh, I need to use all these colors. You know, you spent all this nice money on them. This is a good way for you to use and play with your colors a little bit. Probably won't end up using more pigments this way than you would have putting them into uh, resin and pouring resin. However, doesn't mean that you're wasting your colors because you are using them. And it's just another way of playing with your pigments. And I kind of like it, it's relaxing. And if I'm not making videos of me painting with the pigments, um, to be honest with you, a lot of times I'll have a movie going or some, some tunes going in the background, depending on my day and my need. If I'm having a rough day, I usually will crank up some tunes. Definitely not shy about the music. It helps. So again, like I said, when you're using the dry pigments, it does kind of create a blended type of a look. So if you need it to be accurate, 
This is probably not the technique, but if you'd like colors that are blended, things that uh, work well together, this might, this might do really well. Okay, so this is a nice orange. It's soft apricot is the name, but I thought it would go really well next to the yellow. And I try to put colors that I know will blend really well next to each other. That way, if they do blend, I'm not getting a mush color or a mud color. All right, now this one I'm gonna be a little bit more careful of because you have your individual fingers here. There's a little scallop border. Let's see if I can get in close. I've got morning light coming in and sometimes it throws a little extra shadows. Sorry about that. So you see the scallop border there. There's another scallop border. So that's the division line with the fingers. So I'm gonna try and get up to this point here, but I'm not worried about it going over because it will automatically because I'm dealing with powders and you can only control to a certain point. But I can try. So colors are an interesting thing. Some people either uh, have an easy time working with colors and some people have a really hard time picking out colors. And I used to do a lot of quilting and that was a common thing that came up also. And because I found out just through observ observation, it seemed like there was a couple different classifications for people. One of them, uh, when it had to do with like colors and patterns, either they were a person that could, or, or like to, okay, here again, I'm trying to art and talk. Hang on, let me just focus on this one border. Take care of my needs here, and then I'll continue the story. Okay, so they would either uh, follow the pattern exactly. Let's say you had a pattern that required white, pink, and black. Um, and that's the only way they could see the pattern in their head. They had a hard time visualizing any other color option. And then there was the other individuals who saw a pattern and said, Oh, I don't want to do uh, pink there. Let's do all, like a... a a bright blue instead. I like turquoise much better. And would grab the turquoise and have no problem altering or adjusting the pattern as they see, saw fit. All right, oh, so I'm changing out. Here's my next color. I'm doing a nice magenta. Again, that morning light, there we go. So I'm gonna work in this zone. So I've got a couple boundaries to keep in mind with. Of course, I got my brush loaded up here. Let me see if I can tap off some of the big stuff. Okay, so we've got this boundary here that I want to stay within. And then, you know, I felt like my brush was a little loose. So this boundary here, this boundary here with the next finger, and then this little diamond shape right here with the eye. So just a few things to watch out for. And I'm also going to try and see if I can keep this boundary. If it becomes too much of an issue, sometimes it helps to go ahead and... I just dipped it again and I'm trying to talk. Sorry. So if it becomes too hard to keep within this area, sometimes it's just better to just go ahead and paint this with the color you're thinking of. And so that way all the spaces are contained with the color and then pick up the pink and continue with the pink zone. So you have to figure out with your design what you can do and what you can't do. And sometimes you don't even know until you get started. So I think I can pull this off. And some of the ways you can do this 
is simply by changing the way you apply it. Instead of rubbing, maybe I dab. So I'm gonna tap off some of the excess up here, but then take the edge of the brush, I just turn it just a little bit, and start dabbing over here. And that's my way of controlling what goes over here. And now I can brush over here. Because when you do brush, you have the chances of little flyaways, like this little guy and this little guy over here. I'll take off my excess over here, get on my edge, just brush it over here for a moment and real close to this zone. try and angle my camera just a little bit. Maybe I can knock off some of those shadows. We've got some above lighting and hmm, that's causing a shadow right there, which is not happy. Hmm. See what we can do here. All right, I will come right back. Okay, I hope I made this a little bit better. So the shadow is caused by my phone, unfortunately, and the sun is directly overhead, so it's going through the phone and down onto my surface. Now we are looking at sun rising, so hopefully about noontime, and it should get a little bit less than that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to shift from side to side. I did move down my table a little bit more to help out with this. Let me get done with the, the pink finger and then move to an area that's probably a little less shadow, hopefully. some excess powders. I'll wipe off my brush over here. Get rid of some of the excess pink. Alright, moving to the next color, which is a turquoise blue. Which looks amazing in resin, I have to confess. It looks very similar to the mold color on camera. Of course, it doesn't help with a nice shadow there. Okay, we're gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna just push on through with this blue real quick. And see there, I just it sprinkled a little bit on the pink. But I'm not too worried about it because I know my colors are going to blend together from one edge to the other. And I've already got pink down first. So if there happens to be a little blue, that's fine. If it's too much and I'm uncomfortable with it, I can just simply take the mold, flip it over, tap it on the table, get rid of that excess. So like there, it did clump over. I don't want that to get on that zone too much until I can get some of the uh, next color in. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue back here. All right, that was my paintbrush hitting the camera. I'm really close to the camera. All right, get rid of my extra powder. 
powder. Alright, on to my green. I haven't used this particular green much. And I'm thinking I should have. Alright. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind real quick. I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I'm gonna get that little diamond area because it does seem to be getting some colors from the pink. I don't wanna get some purple in there as soon as I can. This is the uh, purple that I'm gonna use. Now be mindful of some of the pigment powders you do use. They've been coming out with some that are just amazing, but they're very, some of them are really loose, like have a very airy kind of a, I guess texture. Um, it's like a super fine, almost a glitter powder. So it's like you open the cap up and you can see it just floating into space. Um, I would not recommend too much doing a lot of pigment, uh, well, just a lot of the rubbing in like you see me doing right now. With those kind of powders, you'll know when you open it up and it's really super light and floaty um, because you don't want to, you know, start breathing that stuff in. The way I'm using this, there's not a lot of floating in the air because I'm kind of tapping it down into a surface. I'm dipping it in the brush putting applying it here so there's not a lot of floating around plus I've also got a well ventilated area anyway and that helps with that too now that's nice and purple there so I am covered I think all right on to my green for this zone Here's a little clever hint. Okay, so these particular brushes are getting loose right in here. Um, and I can feel it kind of twist. So what I'll probably end up doing is wiggling this out. And you can dab a couple drops of like a wood glue or something like that just on the, in, the, the stem of your brush. Put it back in the metal and then give it a slight rotation so that way it coats all the way around. Wipe off your excess, put it away for like a day and let that set up nice and good. But don't use like a just a basic Elmer's glue. If you can use a wood glue, that would be ideal uh, because, well, for one thing, you're usually gluing a wood wooden brush handle uh, to the metal and the more you can get a glue that's meant for that kind of purpose, meaning gluing wood, the better off you are. That way you can salvage any art supplies that you have that there's nothing really wrong with it. Maybe they just didn't glue that handle on that particular one very well you know we all have that you know dud thing that we get you know otherwise everything else is just fine with it they just didn't they kind of maybe skip that one step or that one product went through the you know what i'm talking about went through the uh the factory and that one one product didn't get the that step so that's an easy fix nothing wrong with the brush just put a little dab of glue and keep going the next day. Mm 
All right. Now this color is almost hard to see because it is so similar to my mold color. <laughs> it's like, all right, where did I actually paint it on? Where didn't I paint it on? Now you see here, I got some of the yellow coming in. There's a little bit of remnants of purple in there and other colors, and that's not uncommon with the last color that's going on that you get a, usually a variety of colors. Just keep on working it. And make sure you go back over the next color, you know, a fair amount, like a little half on that side and half on that side. In other words, have the gold go over a little bit and you have the green go over a little bit. And so that way in the middle, they're nice and blended. I'm really kind of pushing this in here to make sure that I've got the green in here. Because I can't see with the darn. It's too close to the mold color. This is a pretty color though. Not sure why I haven't used it. I gravitate towards those purples and the brights. That's my weak point. Okay, so that's where we're at. So it does come off as not a complete yellow finger, but the yellow kind of blends into the orange and the pink and the blue and the green and then the purple there. And then you got some blending going on in the flower. So let me get rid of the excess and then put this guy to the side and get him ready to be filled up with some extra resin so i will do an update on this video when i pull this guy out of the mold later so this guy is nice and cured and ready to come out as you can see a lot of leftover resin in here some white some silver blue different colors of blue i even got cells in this go figure all right now to pop this out of the mold So we're looking at reverse. Remember I painted the yellow over here and then went from the orange yellow. And I thought it would give it kind of a metal type of a look with doing the violet in there and the way I was brushing it on. So I'm very happy with the results. If you want pure color, don't introduce a darker color in there and just use only that color. But if you're looking for something like this is what I'm talking about, kind of a nice blended look to it. Super happy with that. Super happy. So yay. Well, just a side note, this is what the mold looks like. So it pretty much picked up majority of the pigments and it's now in the resin. So very cool.